Hello and welcome to Community Conversations. I'm your host, KK Conishiro. With so much going on at each Fremont Unified School District High Schools, it can be difficult for students and staff to keep up on everything impacting their school experiences. Fortunately, each school boasts student-run newspapers with long histories of covering news and issues both on and off campus and to help keep their populations informed. With us today to discuss their publications and the roles they play are Navia Carr, Editor-in-Chief for American High School, The Eagle Era, Kayla Kim, President of Kennedy's High School's Titan, is that it, just the Titan? The okay. Titan Tribune. Okay, and Uma Batia, who's the Editor-in-Chief for Washington High School's The Hatchet. Mm -hmm. And of course, our favorite co-host, Dr. Jim Morris. Thank you so much for being here. So first of all, I got to ask, how long have you been doing this? Is this the first one year, two years? How long have you been doing? We're going to start with you. Um, well, I started, um, I joined the journalism class last year. Okay. So um, yeah, two years now, but I became a lot more active and I took the role as like a lead role in the club and the program this year. So okay. yeah. Okay. And you were told me earlier you have been doing this for two years, right? Uh, three. Three. So, oh, yeah. Wow. My first year I was a staff writer and last year as a junior and this year as a senior I editor in chief. Okay. How long have you been doing this? Yeah, so I've been doing this for three years. Wow. Um, yeah, so my first year I was there as a reporter, and then my second year I was there as a co-features editor, okay. and then this year I'm there as, an as the editor-in-chief. Okay. So was the newspaper job ex meet all your expectations? Was it different than what you expected? What, anything surprise you when you first joined the journalism class? Because, um, you know, what you see on TV is different in real life. Yeah. Well, initially, like when I was put into the class, it was really surprising to me because I hadn't signed up for the class. <laughs> so, like, just being honest, like, <laughs> I didn't really, like, intentionally go into it. So, that's kind of like a funny story. But, like, I really enjoyed it. And then I ended up, like, taking off with it. So, oh, good. yeah. Good. <laughs> it was everything that I expected, but I didn't have any expectations. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Was it everything you thought it would be? Yeah. So, um, I have an older sister who went to Mission San Jose High School, and mm -hmm. she actually worked on the smoke signal so she was the one who encouraged me to join the class nice. so she I already had a lot of expectations so it was it was a fun experience the first year for sure nice I think in terms of the amount of writing we did I think there was at times there was more writing which we did at times there was less but I think there are other p components of the class which I had not expected for us to learn from for example uh, when we, I don't know if you guys do this, but ad sales, I think that was like completely new. Um, <laughs> I think as a reporter, when you go into the class, you're expecting to just do writing, but that's not the only thing you're learning. You have to learn how to go out there in the real world, and you have to learn yes. those real world skills. Yes. Good for you, because yeah. sales is hard. It is. <laughs> yeah. So can you, each of you tell us a little history of your paper, because is this a new thing, or have you guys been publishing the papers for 20 years, or how does this work? Um, so our paper, the Titan Tribune. Um, Why don't you hold got, it up so people can see. Okay, so this was um, the second issue of this year, so okay. this is just like the front spread. Okay. And um, so it started not too long ago, like 2010. Okay. Um, yeah, so it was started it wasn't really like um, someone that like started it as a program. It didn't initially start that way. It was just kind of um, a group of kids that got together and just started it on their own, on their wow. free time. So Love yeah. the initiative. Yeah. So for us, um, it started not too long ago, but it's been going pretty strong ever since. So yeah. Okay. And how long has your paper been around? Um, about 44 years, so it's oh. <laughs> relatively old. <laughs> yeah. I'm ancient then. <laughs> Okay, that's great. Yeah. And your paper? So um, our paper, The Hatchet, has actually been around since 1916. So even before... 1916? Yeah, even before Fremont was um, incorporated. That's older than me. <laughs> <laughs> right. And um, so this was our actually our last issue. Um, it was a special edition which we did on Islam and Islamophobia. Mm -hmm. And um, since then, we've just been doing our thing. That's great. So tell me, do you know the history on, of the name, the hatchet, how that came up? Yeah, so it actually came up, um, it's related to the cherry tree myth with George Washington, uh -huh. where, he sa where he received ah. a hatchet from his father, and he cut down a tree, and when his father found out, he was very angry, yeah. and so he told his father, I cannot tell a lie, I did cut down this tree with my hatchet. So that's where the name comes there from. There you go. There oh, you that's go. awesome. See, that I is. have wondered for the last, since I've been in yeah. Fremont, I've wondered, why, why the do they call it the hatchet? So that's oh, awesome. You know. <laughs> this is great. Now, do you two have dissimilar history behind your titles? 
Um, I think ours is pretty like self-explanatory. <laughs> it sounded catchy. We yeah. liked it. The Titan Tribune. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Same with yours. Yeah. Okay. Now, as editor in chiefs, which you all are, um, do you meet with your staff to discuss what you're going to be putting the paper? Uh, you know, what stories you're going to include? Who's going to interview who? I mean, how does this all work? Um, so, what we our process usually includes. Um, the very first step is coming up with story ideas. So mm -hmm. our whole staff um, actually goes out and uh, looks for story ideas in the, on campus, in okay. the community, in the district, whatever it may be that impacts uh, the Washington student directly. Okay. And then once we do that, we come together and we pick some of the few ones which we think are the most important. And then once that is done, the editors meet and we assign stories to the different reporters. And um, from there, it's more of just the editors managing which stories go into their sections. And then if there's anything specific that comes up, then we look at it together and see how it should be dealt with. Dealt okay. with. Is it similar with your papers? Um, ours is a bit more loose, so um, every month after we've published um, our last our issue, the previous month, we have a budget meeting. So this is where everyone, including the editors, come together and we just pitch ideas and we write them all out on a board. Okay. And um, we just assign these stories to each staff writer. Okay. And go from now, is it fair to say that all of you started out as reporters? Yes. Okay, so as an editor-in-chief, when you've got a younger class person and it's their first interview, and they're nervous, of course, how would you coach them into being more comfortable in talking to strangers about a story? How do you help them with that? Um, I think they first, I think we encourage people first to kind of want to find something that they're like really enthusiastic about, something okay. that they want to talk about, That's you know, good. something that they're more comfortable with, yeah. so that they're not as nervous. So um, for the younger generations, like whoever's going to be taking over the newspaper when I'm gone, mm -hmm. um, I think there's a lot of potential and I haven't really had to coach them because they're already like, they started really strong and um, yeah, but as for nerves and stuff, um, our school is really laid back, so it's like not not in a bad way, <laughs> not in a bad okay. way. But everyone just everyone knows each other. You know, it's pretty small. Everyone knows each other. Everyone knows who everyone is. So it's more like close knit, mm -hmm. and so I don't think they get too nervous about having okay. to talk to anyone. Yeah. Okay. Do you feel the same with your newbies? Um, yeah. Um, some students who are nervous, like you said, um, we just encourage them to be prepared, so have their questions ready, and oh. teach them to um, come up with open-ended questions. So they can get the most out of their conversation. Yeah, yeah. good. Same with you? Um, so for us at the beginning uh, of the year, right before we before we even release the first issue, we actually have this little activity where the editors from their previous years who've already gone through the process of interviewing um, actually hold a mock interview and nice. show what not to do and have, nice. and have the staff reporters pick out what what's going on that's yeah. wrong yeah. and so I think that really helps and then we also go through a few different tips and then of course the editors are always there to help out the staff reporters nice. if they have any problems. Now did, is your all your papers published once a month, once a week, how does this work? Um, so ours come out just with the, with each volume so it comes out every I'd say a couple of months so okay. it was yeah because uh, we have had three volumes so far so okay. yeah it's fair to okay. say a couple months. And yeah, yours? ours is every month. Every month, and yours is? Every month. Okay, so I'm looking at your papers, and they're on real newsprint. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where do you get this printed at? Um, we get it printed at Freaky Parks. Yes? Uh, yeah. 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 But, yeah so all you do? We, yeah. Okay, great. Because it looks like a real paper. Yeah, it does. Well, I'm, I'm curious. I want to go back to your editorial, because all of the student newspapers, they send us copies of them, mm -hmm. and I read them. So I, I, I learn a lot. <laughs> but. It's just uh, this interesting balance, and I'm wondering how you make that determination between telling, uh, you know, writing or sharing information about the new building that's going to be built at American High School versus, you know, a really in-depth social issue like, you know, Kennedy stands with Paris um, or Islamophobia, which was like an amazing entire edition that you did. How do you work around? making those decisions about what is it that's most important to cover. That's tough stuff. It is. I think um, I think what you really have to look at is, you know, 
these might be big issues which you know the country is facing and this, the world is facing but I think under it all I think there are I think students are also worried about this mm -hmm. so I think it's bringing it's bringing the student perspective and tying it back in to the student that really makes the issue come to life and I think that's what that's what you have to go out and look for those stories so you have to look out for look for those students who might feel that at times they have faced Islamophobia and bring those to light and I think that's what that's what really makes it um, makes it come together as an issue yeah so we of course we report on school issues or school policies but last year we actually did a center spread on the Black Lives Matter movement mm -hmm. um, and that was because so many students at our school were very um, were speaking up about the injustice and the police brutality and they um, students came together and joined like created their own movement like social inequality movement and had a discussion so we decided to do a center spread on that movement and what led to that movement and I think we just re report on anything that the students feel are interested in and have a voice about because that's important to talk about even if it's not like directly impacting the school. Now do you also take suggestions from your student body like if yeah. someone a classmate says can you talk about something like this? You yeah, open to that? There's actually a few different ways which we do that. Uh -huh. um, we have our own Facebook page and so anytime students have a tip they can just Facebook message us. We also have our own Twitter. Um, outside our advisor's room, Mr. Skillings, we also have a little um, student tip box where they can anonymously write down okay. tips for us and put it in. Yeah. Nice. Now, how does this work around your regular school day? I mean, it, it, it's a class, I get that. But when you start editing and proofing and laying out, is this after school or is it only during the class time? Um, How does this work? Well, for me individually, it, so it is a class, but mm -hmm. right now I'm not in the class. So um, it is a lot of after school stuff, like um, talking to other officers, getting things like worked out at like meetings and stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, it's also like when the deadline is approaching, like right. you need to put a lot more work it into a lot deadline. more time. <laughs> yeah, a lot of more time. So it really, it depends on where you're at in the production process. But definitely when the deadline is approaching, there's more time being put into it for sure. Okay, for you is the same thing after school um, too? Yeah, journalism is actually a class. So normally during that class period, um, the editors are normally editing articles, so that takes up a majority of our class time. So we normally like do the layout on weekends or after schools, so we have to put in a lot of effort like outside of class as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Same with you? Yeah, so it's a lot of after school, especially near the end when we start approaching the deadline, as you said. Um, um, at times, um, our advisor, sometimes we work on it on the weekends as well. Like we have the program at home or we oh, have nice. work days. Okay. Um, so that we usually we usually work on that as well. And there are times where, you know, even it's not even just the editors who have to work after school. Um, the editors usually work after school near the end, but I think there are a lot of times where reporters have to stay after school to talk to teachers or talk to other right. sources that they might need to. Right. Now, I know you guys cover a lot of different subjects, but are there any subjects that are taboo that you will not cover? Um, just any like private issues okay. regarding students. Like obviously, we won't we won't report on a student being suspended because yeah. that's a personal. Oh, issue. that's good. Yeah, that's good. Very nice of you. <laughs> yeah, I think. Um, I think there are certain subjects which it might seem taboo to report on, but I think it's more of on how you report on it versus what you report on that it really matters. Because the way you report on something can bring out new angles and new light and shed new light on a topic. And that's how you would handle negative stories or anything that with a hard subject? Definitely. Very smart. These girls are smart. Oh yeah. <laughs> that's great. Gosh. Now, once you... Um, when you became editor-in-chief, was it the class that voted you as the, or did you have to interview for this position? How does this work? Um, for us, since the journalism program as a whole, it's a, both a class and a club. So I became president of the club, and then in turn, during class, I became editor-in-chief. Okay. So yeah, during the club meetings, there is like a whole election process, as with all the other clubs at campus. So yeah, it was like an election sort okay. of thing. Yeah. Because I'm sure you weren't the only one in your class who wanted the job. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then you make the speech, and you go up there, and then everyone votes in the ballot. <laughs> so yeah. Nerve wracking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How was your position um, to do? I was actually appointed by the advisor. Oh, nice. And you've had it for three years. 
Oh, two years at two years. Yeah. Okay, good. And you? So it's a it's a bit more complicated in that we have to at the beginning we have to write a letter, a one page letter, talking about our goals for the newspaper okay. and what we would want to change, what we want to keep, what we think was done well this year, what we think could be improved upon. And then from there, there is a PowerPoint presentation in front of the class, as well as an interview with the advisor and the previous editor-in-chief. Wow. And then, <laughs> and then uh, the class as well um, does kind of a ballot thing, and then the advisor and previous editor-in-chief decide. Yeah. She's ready wow. for the world. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Now, how do you think your experiences with this editor-in-chief job will help you with your future life? Um, I think a lot of the things that you do while you're making the paper, like she mentioned before, it really teaches you to go out there and, you know, talk to people and not be as, you know, like nervous to go out and just, you know, right. ask for an ad. Yeah. <laughs> but um, also, it definitely has, like, it really, working with news and always, you know, seeing news and being exposed to what's going on, I think it, it really, like, gives you a different look at what's, you know, like, what's really happening. Right. And um, I think that definitely does like stick with you and it teaches you a lot, for sure. Good. How about yeah. you? Personally, for me, um, I think one part of journalism that, or what really affected me was having to read the news constantly, like not just like school news, but outside news. And I think that just forced me to be much more conscious. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very important. That's one thing that journalism teaches everyone, to be conscious and also just to like, be more social and like you said like talk to people and not be scared of interviews even if you're talking about a taboo topic um, and also just working with the other students so, because I've had like both positive and um, negative experiences with leadership so I learn a lot based on how to interact with people and how to talk to them to get the most positive it's results. Priceless. Yeah. How about you? And, you know, I was I yeah. I do agree with you. It does make you a lot more conscious about what's going on, not only in your school and the district, but basically what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things which I realized like throughout the three years. Um, another thing, like with this specific job, is that there's a lot of managing going on. <laughs> so you have to be you have to know how to delegate resources, and you have to know how to. Um, how to handle the resources which you have and don't have, and then um, bring them together accordingly. And I think that's I think that's something which is I think going to be helpful in my life. Just kind of bringing yeah. the, your own life together, yeah. it, it really helps you. Though it's interesting, the one thing none of you mentioned is the thing I admire most about our new student newspapers in general is just the clarity of the writing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really having those skills to communicate something at the level of the audience that they may yeah. know nothing about. And then they have editorial pieces also, which are completely a different genre of writing, <laughs> yes. you know? Um, so great. I, 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 I'm always impressed at the writing. As yeah. you should be, you I are think, very talented, <laughs> very you. talented. I think it's interesting that you bring that up because uh, journalistic writing has a very different feel to it. So as a reporter, I remember when I first entered the class, um, kind of, deviating from that normal how to write an English paper was very hard at the beginning. And I think um, I think your, your, your writing outside of class, outside of the journalism class itself, changes as well as you write more stories. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I want to thank all three of you for doing this show for us. We appreciate your help. We wish you the best of luck for your future. I know you'll be out there saving the world for us and not <laughs> enlightening us about it. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you, of course. Thank you. And from everyone here at Community Conversations, we appreciate you watching and we'll see you next time. Thank you.